Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome to Educating Adventures. There are many types of forest ecosystems. We've got forests that are warm all year long like the rainforest where we find monkeys and parrots. We've got forests that are warm in the summer but cold in the winter and they lose their leaves during that chilly season. That's a temperate forest. Today we are going to be talking about a type of forest that is cold all year long and has developed some really unusual characteristics to survive in this harsh environment. We are going to be talking about the boreal forest today, so let's jump in. Boreal forests, which are also called taigas, are a type of forest ecosystem that has mostly evergreen trees and is found way far away from the equator, usually way up in the northern latitudes. Now, before we get too far into boreal forests, let's do a quick review about what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a place that could be land, it could be water, and it has living and non-living things that all kind of work together and interact in that area. So. The boreal forest is a very important ecosystem, but it's also the largest ecosystem in the world. It covers most of the northern part of North America, so Alaska and northern Canada, but it also covers a good portion of northern Asia and northern Europe. And because it is such a large ecosystem, depending on where you are in the boreal forest, things can be a little bit different. So if we're talking about the average amount of rainfall or the average yearly temperature, these things can be different depending on the region of the boreal forest that you are in. Because of their position so far north of the equator, it's a really extreme environment for plants and animals to live in. The winters are very long and cold, and the summers, which we call the growing season, are very short. and I wouldn't go as far as saying warm, but I would say warmer than the winter. And boreal forests are an incredibly important ecosystem. Like all forests, they pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and release oxygen when they go through photosynthesis. So they are actively pulling carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas, they're pulling it out of the atmosphere and turning it into something beneficial, and therefore they're helping slow climate change. If you wanna learn more about greenhouse gases, be sure to check out our video on greenhouse gases, because I'm gonna move along to another reason that boreal forests are so important. Boreal forests are home to about 25% of the world's wetlands. A quarter of all of the wetlands in the entire world are found in the boreal forest. Now this is important for lots of region, reasons. Wetlands help filter water. They actually help to keep that fresh water clean. They of course provide really important habitats for plants and animals. And during droughts or floods, they act as kind of a buffer so that the droughts and floods are not so extreme. And another very important thing, wetlands store carbon. And all of that carbon, which could otherwise be up in the atmosphere acting as a greenhouse gas, is trapped nicely in these wetlands where they're not affecting the climate. Boreal forests are home to many, many different types of plants and animals. For plants, there are many different types of trees and shrubs and flowers. However, the most common plant that we find in the boreal forest is a conifer, which is an evergreen tree, typically, that produces its seeds in cones and has those needle-like leaves. Spruce trees, fir trees, pine trees are all examples of conifers and conifers are very, very well adapted to these cold, snowy environments. Everything down to the shape of the tree itself is a perfect adaptation. When it snows, instead of having these big, wide branches where snow could sit and get heavy and potentially break a branch off, they're shaped with a point at the top, right? They're shaped like a triangle. So when the snow falls, the snow can kind of slip right off the trees and it doesn't build up on their branches. Of course, when we think of pine trees and fir trees, we do picture those leaves 
as needles, right? They have these modified leaves that are really skinny. Now these leaves or needles are very important as well. They have a waxy coating which helps trap in moisture. They don't want to lose any water. So that waxy coating traps in moisture. It also tastes really bad, so most animals don't want to eat it. And usually these needles are dark in color, which helps absorb sunlight. So dark colors absorb sunlight, while light colors reflect sunlight. So having dark colors helps them absorb that sunlight, which, you know, is very important, especially during the long winter. They can photosynthesize all year long because they never lose their leaves. That's why we call them evergreens, because they're always green. As we mentioned before, conifers typically produce their seeds in woody cones. So as these cones are developing, the seeds are developing inside of them, they're nice and tight and protected, and then as they mature and they are ready to drop, the cones will actually open up and allow the seeds to fall out and spread around the environment. And these seeds, along with the fruits and berries and flowers and all the other little yummies that some of the other plants are making are really, really important for animals, especially during the growing season when all that food is available. Just like plants have had to adapt to the harsh conditions of the boreal forest, so have the animals. So some animals who stay there year round, like a brown bear or a marmot, they go into hibernation. They find a nice protected area where they're safe from predators, safe from harsh weather, and they'll basically go into a long rest for the whole winter until the growing season starts, the temperature's warm, food is more available, and they will come out and fill their bellies. Some animals, instead of going into a long sleep in the boreal forest, will escape the boreal forest altogether. They will migrate. And migration is the process of an animal traveling from one place to another based on the season usually. So in the boreal forest, animals like snowy owls, caribou, and many, many species of songbirds, hundreds and hundreds of species will migrate south in the winter to somewhere where it's a little bit warmer and food is more available. And then in the summer, they'll migrate back to the boreal forest to eat some of that new food and for breeding and for birds for nesting. The boreal forest is a very important breeding habitat for many species of birds and mammals and lots of other animals as well. Other animals just tough out the winter in the boreal forest. They'll develop a really thick layer of fur to help them survive in the freezing temperatures. So animals like lynx and snowshoe hares, who happen to be a very important food source for the lynx, they develop that thick layer of fur and some of these animals even change their diet as well to be able to eat food that's more available during that harsh winter season. So the boreal forest, even though it's a really extreme and hard environment for plants and animals to live, some of them have mastered it. And that happens to be the case in almost every type of ecosystem. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while we learned about the boreal forest. If you want quizzes and activities and projects on the boreal for forest, be sure to check out our website. The link is below and I hope we see you guys next time.